My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today I will cover the quest tree. So this tree view here that shows the files and directories of your project. So actually it's pretty close to what you have on the real file system. So let's see what we have on the real file system. Uh, this is the data folder of my quest. And as you can see, the quest editor will just show the tree view of your data folder. And it will um, hide some files that are irrelevant to the project or that are internal. These two files are some metadata uh, that we don't want to, to show to the user direct directly here. But that's a detail. Uh, what you need to know is that this is the tree view of your data folder and it will show all folders, all um, Lua files, so these are your scripts, also all PNG files, for example we have some PNG files here, and all resources, what we call resources, is everything, every file that has a special meaning in Solaris. So maps, enemies, uh, fonts, entities, we'll see what, what it means later. But uh, yeah, the lists of resources of your project have a, <laughs> a special status in, in Solaris. For example, if, you, if a file is a resource, like this one is a map, uh, the real name is firstmap.dat, you can see it in the tree here. Then it is allowed to have a description here, and the description can be useful. It's optional, but it can be useful if you want to uh, put some more details here, rather than just relying on the file name. So if in this particular example, okay, it's maybe not that useful. You can also change the description he here when you are editing your map. And similarly for most resources, like if you if you are editing a sprite, I haven't explained sprites, sprites yet, but the description is also here. Um, anyway, what what more do we have uh, in, in the columns here? We also have more metadata. Um, you can fill the author, author and license of every file. So this is useful legal information if you are ready to distribute or to publish your pro project soon. It's cool to um, put this information. So let's do it. I'm the author of this file. And I will put the map in Creative Commons, for example. Author and license. And spoiler alert, later when I will explain how to import files from another quest, any metadata of these files, including author and license, will also be imported. So the information will be preserved if you get the files from here, instead of copying them manually from uh, the explorer. Um, okay, so back to the basic features of the quest tree you can right click any element you can or okay you cannot delete the special folders like music uh, maps the resource folders have, they have to stay here oh by the way uh, one more thing about author and license because it's important uh, you can edit the, the author and license of multiple files at once and this is very very handy thanks to multiple selection uh, okay what was I going to explain mm, yes that you can uh, rename things delete things open things uh, from the contextual menu here you also have keyboard shortcuts for most actions um, let's Let's start by just creating 
a simple folder here. Hello. Okay, what happened? We have the folder that shows up here, uh, here as expected, and it was also created in uh, my on my disk. So n really nothing special here. I could also have created it from the explorer. Another one, and it appears here. Okay, and uh, I will just delete them. Uh, hello. Or maybe maybe you can try to rename one. Hello too. Okay, the change was reflected here, so everything should be updated in in real time. If I rename it to hello again, now it's called hello. So you can create, rename, delete folders, uh, both from the Quest Three or from your Explorer. It, it doesn't make any difference here. Same for Lua files. So by default you have um, this scripts folder which is really a, just a regular folder. It has no special icon. It means that the quest editor is not doing anything particular about it. So same you can you can just create new uh, Lua files from the disk Okay, it's here. Rename them, delete them, both from the disk or from your uh, Solaris Quest editor window. It doesn't make any difference uh, because these are just regular Lua files. Um, when it makes a difference, it's when we are talking about resources. So here, um, resources are lists of important elements of your game, really. For example, you have a list of map, list of maps, sorry, a list of tile sets, a list of musics. So resources can also be and, and should be uh, organized in subfolders uh, when you have a lot, like sprites. And the editor keeps keep tracks of what is declared uh, in your list of, for example, in your list of musics and your list of maps and your list of etc. for all types of resources. This is the mechanism that allows the editor to provide this kind of combo box here with the list of declared musics or the list of declared tile sets. So, bad things will happen if you try to remove a music from the disk without telling the editor. So I just put a music a music file to the trash. And this time the editor is not as happy as uh, when I did kind of the same thing with uh, regular scripts. Because this time it's a resource. So, well, well, well. The editor is saying, well, 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 not so fast. There was a music called Boss declared in the project. Uh, I can't find it anymore. So it will show up. It will still show up even if you remove it from the disk. It will still show up here in the quest editor, but with a small exclamation mark red icon saying find not found. But it's still declared on your in your project, meaning that maps that are using, I mean, yeah, it, it will still be available in combo boxes. If this map was using the boss, was using the boss music, then it will it would continue to to point to this boss music. But of course, it will not work when you run the game because the file is missing, and the contrary is also possible. the The opposite situation. If you have a music file, okay, I created a copy here. So this time it's, it's the opposite. I have some file in my disk and it's not declared in the project. So it, it doesn't show up with the good resource icon here. Meaning that, okay, um, there is this file. It has the correct extension, so it could be a music, but it's not declared in the quest. 
And what you can do at this point is add two quests as music. Uh, and before you do that, it will not show up in the combo boxes. After you do it, the, it will. Yeah, it's here. So I, I call it test. It's the description that show that is shown here, not the file name. Um, okay, so this mechanism is quite important to remember. It's the same for all kinds of resources. If something is, if what is declared in the project is different from what is on the disk, you will have uh, one of these two icons. So again. I, I, I will remove this one. So it's a good... It, by the way, when you remove a file, for the reasons that I just explained, especially if it's a resource file, it's better to do the removal from the quest editor because it will also remove its declaration in the project. So it was removed from the disk and from the project. It's no longer... I no longer have my test music here in the combo box. Okay, and maybe maybe it's time to fix this mistake here. Uh, if I go to the trash, I will find it, restore, and and it's done. The quest editor was automatically updated. It detected that the file is back. So no more problems, no more weird icon. It means that. Uh, Everything is in sync between what is declared in the project and what is on the disk, at least for music. But uh, the same rules apply to all resources. So enemies, entities, fonts, items, language, basically all folders that have a special icon, maps, music, not scripts, but shaders, sounds, and sprites. Okay. Um, so it's really good practice to make sure that you don't have any uh, mismatch between the disk and, and the quest uh, and change this from time to time. Normally when you create a new project you have a lot of files especially in sprites and everything should be declared correctly otherwise it's a small bug that I will need to fix before the next release. And it's also true, it should also be true for all our resource packs. Uh, I will do other tutorials about how to import things from qu other quests and especially from resource packs. And I think you will be interested. But that's it for today. Thank you so much. And if you have any question about the quest tree or Solaris in general, uh, feel free to join our Discord and we will try to help. Thank you, and that's all for now.